Hello from the Future of Go Summit in Wuzhen, China. I'm Tora Grapel, research scientist at DeepMind. I'm here with Michael Redmond, Nindan professional. Happy to be here. Um, this is the last day of the event, and we had a fantastic few days with exciting uh, Go games, exciting moves that we saw, fantastic players that participated in all of these activities. Um, and today we saw the last match between uh, Koji and uh, AlphaGo. Um, Michael, you uh, found some particularly interesting uh, moves here. Can you tell us about them, please? Yes. Well, the entire early part of the game was very interesting. And the uh, interesting part, actually up to this part, it is a sequence that can be seen in human games. So it has been seen in professional games. But uh, this move by AlphaGo, uh, a very unusual move. Um, the meaning of this move is it is trying to um, put some pressure on this white group right. and thus help black to build on the lower side. So, and also black is hoping to um, make a structure in the upper right here. So um, if we're just looking at the upper right, uh, black will be hoping to do something like this, chasing this white group out and creating a flow of stones to allow black to play on the lower side. Meanwhile, black is making a nice structure here also. And we can see that white is slightly cramped in this position. Right, yeah, I see. And so that is the meaning of this move. And I think it's a new move. So it was an uh, innovative move by AlphaGo here. And at this point, Kretsch uh, realized that it was maybe not so good to cover here. And he played away, which is also it's very interesting to see. Um, when the local move is not so good, it's really good to play away sometimes. Right. So white kicked here once, um, and black extended. And so uh, white created a relatively weak black group here to take the offensive on that side of the board. Also, white is aiming to slide into the corner here um, to put some pressure on this black group. And uh, by doing so, this would strengthen the white group on the right side here. Right. So black uh, prevented that by extending here. Naturally, this is also taking the base of this white stone. And white extended here. This is very small extension but it also protects the weakness here by making moves around here, forcing for white. Mm -hmm. And so it's very natural for black to jump out into the central center now. And we're expecting uh, a sequence where both of these groups on the lower side will be um, running out into the center of the board. Um, but actually, at this point, Kote played a very exciting move, um, the placement here, yes, which that is very um, special. It's a very special move. It's a double threat. It, it actually um, turn one of the weaknesses of this position here, which is starting to make a territory, is the 3-3 three, three point. Uh, but the idea ha here of this move is to make the 3-3 three, three point more effective. For instance, if black does something, uh, the direct uh, e meaning of this is to, that white is um, proposing to c connect underneath here and strengthen this white group. So if black does something to stop that, this would be a bit awkward for black, because then white would be able to, um, when white comes into the corner like this, this stone becomes the perfect point to give white yeah. a living shape mm -hmm. and actually scoop out black space. So uh, in this position, the offensive and defensive would be upturned, like white would have a, an, an opportunity to take the offensive here. So um, if black protects the corner, of course, then this would give white an opportunity to settle this group. And so that would uh, get rid of all of white's worries in this area. And so this is a point where most players are very confused because uh, playing on the right side and playing on the left side both do not look very good. And so here uh, it's an example of very strong play that black actually plays elsewhere. Right. This leaves this because black has no good local move and plays on this side. And shoulder moves are a favorite. Uh, a favorite of, of AlphaGo. Alpha In this case, it's actually a very, um, uh, it's not all that unusual. It's a very nice sequence that Black has here to settle the group and move into the left side of the board. And so at this point, White left it. Um, White did play once here. And again, we see um, Kote, he's playing very, um, innovatively and he's very active like he's um, creating several groups and not all of them are settled like this group and this group and this group are not settled um, but he's trying to be very efficient and 
um, AlphaGo is actually playing very solidly and allowing um, Crutch Day to do that. But as it turns out, Black is not falling behind. So it seems that Black is playing slowly, but Black is not losing anything by it. Right. And now the next move is the move that uh, a move by Crutch Day. The final move that I want to call attention to is this move. Because um, in the old times, before AlphaGo, this move was considered to be locally an overplay. And also, um, however Black answered it, it was considered to be a bad exchange anyway. Uh, so this kind of move, it was recommended to play further away from the corner, like this or this. Um, but when Black does have a stone like this on the side, a, a group on the side like this, uh, playing here often is a bit too slow. And so the re result of that is that most players will not jump into this area very soon anyway. But playing this um, move that puts pressure on the one stone here, um, Kratze decided it was better than not playing anything at all. So he played this exchange before playing here. And this attachment was actually played by AlphaGo in one of three self-played uh, Go games that were published by DeepMind. And these games were played about the time that Lisa et al. was playing AlphaGo. And so there's three of these games that are about a year and a half old now, I suppose, um, that had this attachment played by AlphaGo in them. And professional Go players have seen that. And in this case, uh, Kratze is working with that and making it into something new, um, learning from the AlphaGo experience and uh, making it something better, maybe, uh, by playing this and making this knight's move work well in this position. So it was very interesting and exciting to see how uh, Kratze is picking up a lot from the way AlphaGo plays, and he's working with it to make his own distinct style here. All right, that's really great to see.